welcome to episode 120 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 11th of June. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making since the last podcast. So today I have some knitting, I have some sewing and I have some information on my shop update which is every Friday at 7pm. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook and Ravelry as Craft House Magic and I have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find my hand dyed yarn, handmade project bags, stitch markers, higher higher knitting needles and accessories and also fabrics. So we have a few make-alongs going on at the moment so just recently we have the What A Lot Of Potter Cal come to a close and I was doing a lovely collaboration with the lovely Becky for the Back To Blighty podcast um, and it's come to a close now but Becky is going to announce the four winners um, on her next podcast which should be coming in the next couple of days I think um, so do watch out for that I um, I will be donating sort of two prizes um, and on my next podcast I shall be showing you what those will be as well because I haven't made them yet <laughs> um, but if you do go over to Becky's podcast you'll see the winners so we also have the spring shawl along that will go on until the end of June so you still have plenty of time to enter any shawl or scarf um, come and join in it's a discussion thread and I will be drawing prizes from the discussion thread itself um, and I've just started the summer sock along which started last week and that will run right until the end of August so you have plenty of time to knit as many socks as you can <laughs> They can be any pattern, so they can be shorties, full length socks, whatever you'd like. Um, and even if you've got something that's under 50% started, that can be included as well. So do come over and join us over in the Ravelry group. So let's get on with the knitting, shall we? I have two finished objects to show you. I'm very excited. So I did my eye cord since the last episode and I've done all the way around my jigsaw puzzle shawl with an eye cord in like a turquoisey blue colour, um, which is this one and it's called Smells Like Teen Spirit. And then I've added tassels. <laughs> the most ginormous tassels that you can imagine. I shall put it on for you so you can see what it looks like. It's basically a blanket, a massive, massive blanket to, to wear outside the house. <laughs> so I can wear it like this and have my massive tassels on show that way. I think they're the biggest ones I've made. <laughs> so there they are. So I can also wear it. Um, as a traditional shawl shape as well and it's you can just see how big it is then um, it properly covers my back right around the back there and I've still got plenty to keep me warm at the front I suppose I could wear it like this but you can still see my tassels <laughs> absolutely love it so this is the jigsaw puzzle by Stephen West and it's knitted in four ply yarn but the yarns are held double. Now in the pattern it suggests you mile, mile them um, but what I did actually is keep the each section I've basically just used two strands of the same yarn just because I wanted quite distinct blocks of colour but it's up to you you could do whichever you like. Um, it's surrounded in an eye cord edge which I think is nice it just um, helps keep it together because because it's garter stitch it's quite squishy and stretchy so that um, edge is just keeps it in a nice shape and I've just give it a quick block I didn't stretch it out too much just to get it into a nice smooth um, tidy shape um, and that's how it looks so I'm going to see if I can tell you what all the colours are this one is holding out for a hero this one is nothing's going to stop us now this little tiny one is Rock Me Amadeus, but I think I have a larger section of that that I can show you. Oh, there's a slightly bigger one there. That's Rock Me Amadeus. I have Come On Eileen. I have I Think We're Alone Now and Lucky Star. Have I showed? Oh, I haven't showed you Tell It To My Heart, which is that one. And I think that's it. I used... Um, Nothing's going to stop us now and smells like teen spirit for the huge, huge tassels. 
Um, and now I've got a lovely squishy finished object. So I'm pleased about that. Ta-da! I can't stop holding it up so I can have a look at it. <laughs> So that's all finished that's another one of my make nine um, completely finished so I'm really chuffed about that I think I've done a few things off my make nine list I should perhaps do a summary at the beginning of July and see how well I've been getting on <laughs> so we shall see if I've got time to do that at some point what I thought was really funny is that I used a Christmas CD to make my tassels <laughs> and I used the longest edge to wrap the tassel around and I did 200 wraps of the CD case that's my measurement of how large my tassels are this time <laughs> so my second finished object is a shawl that my mother-in-law Liz has knitted and it's the typhoon shawl that was kindly gifted to me by my friend Terry so thank you so much Terry um, I had some yarn I thought perfect for it I had this navy which is a sweet Georgia yarns that I picked up when I went on holiday last year um, and the colorway is just called marine um, and I had that in my stash and I had this gorgeous snuggly stars yarn uh, which is called black current forest so obviously this navy sort of color is the marine and then the black current fo forest from snuggly stars is the bit that's in between so this pattern is fantastic for self-striping yarn really now this um this yarn that I've used here isn't uh, proper self-striping as such but I thought that it would work really well together with that navy and you've got these little sort of short rows going along the shawl and it's in sections so you've got sections of navy and sections of the um, self-striping and then this gorgeous gorgeous edge and I just thought oh absolutely lovely really nice squishy garter stitch so comfortable to wear and it's a nice long crescent shaped shawl so i probably wear it mostly like this and i think because it's navy um with splashes of all sorts of colors that'll go with loads of stuff and i just love this little edge really pretty um so of course you could wear that over the back as well Like this in the traditional you could have a little shawl pin at the side like that <laughs> but I think that these colors would go with a lot of outfits anyway uh, so these yarns have got a slightly different composition the sweet Georgia marine colorway is on an 80% superwash merino 20% nylon and the black current forest um, colorway with all the different colors in is 70% merino 20% yak and 10% um, nylon so they're both sort of sock yarns but they go together quite well I think um, I think if you've got the self-striping you'd have um, more of a sort of a block effect across these sections um, I hope they'll be able to put a picture on the screen to show you what the sort of pattern shows it would look like if you actually used a proper self-striping but I think it's gorgeous anyway so there we are and it just goes to a point at the tips Ta -da! love it it slightly blows out when i it hits the lights of my camera but it is a nice deep sort of navy that's that's a good color representation really pretty and i like the little eyelets that are involved in the sort of shaping of the sections as well really pretty so the pattern is called typhoon and it's by josh right ricks robinski i think that's a really bad pronunciation but you you can have a look at the spelling in the in the notes in the down bar you'll be able to find a link to it as well on Ravelry um, but there we go so I have a work in progress I've got to show you well wow, it's a hoe <laughs> it's a half finished pair of socks and they're my Star Trek socks and these are knitted with a lovely little sock set that I got from Ducky Darlings and they're called the Make It So Minis so I had them um, as a little mini set and they're merino with lit little Donegal nets in um, and I've got five different colourways um, and I've just caked them up ready to use so I'm just sort of striping these as I fancy so I did 10 rows of the red at the top, 
two rows of the black, 12 rows, two rows, 12 rows, two rows, 12 rows, two rows, did the heel flap, 10 rows of the red, because I'd already done 10 rows there, I thought I'd keep it balanced, um, two rows of the black, 12, two, 12, two, 12, two, 10 rows of the red, and then finish the toe off with the black, um, to do a sort of nice striped sock and Adam has given me strict instructions that I had to have it in this order <laughs> because command has to be in the top and then we've got engineers and medical apparently I was going to put the blue above the yellow but he said no Ellie that's wrong <laughs> so I had to do it in the way he wanted them so that's one finished uh, I basically just use my simple top down sock pattern which I'll leave a link to in the down bar but I will also put a link at the top there to the videos that accompany that if you're interested in um, learning how to knit socks top down. I have already done um, most of the cuff and that's um, nearly at the point where I'm going to do the heel flap actually I've just got to start two rows of the black and then do the heel flap bit um what I have been doing is that I've been sewing in the yarn as I go because there's going to be a lot of ends in here so I'll cut this so that it's um a sort of six inch tail and then I'll start on knit an entire row of the new colour and then I will hold both of the ends in my left hand and knit those two in with the next round all the way around um, so that they're, they're tucked in at the same time so I don't have to do sort of two rounds of sewing in. Um, you can kind of see that it's not quite as neat if you, as if you sort of hand sewed each end in um, but there's going to be so many ends I'm just doing them in, doing them as I go along <laughs> makes it much easier so that's from Ducky Darlings um, and I'm really enjoying knitting those and I've definitely stuck to the instructions that Adam's given me for those stripes so don't worry <laughs> that is actually all the knitting I've got to show you today but I do have some sewing to show you so the first part of the sewing section I've got some dressmaking and I've made some um yoga pants they are so they're basically like leggings this is a cashmere pattern and with the pattern there are two sort of versions you can do the leggings which don't have a separate sort of waistband like this and then this version is called the yoga pants version and you get a, like a um, double thickness waistband at the top which I thought might be quite comfortable so I've made that version and I basically picked my sizes according to measurements in the pattern but I did find that I think that I could probably got away with going a little bit tighter might be because I've got used to wearing clothes that are too small for me really <laughs> but I like my leggings to be quite tight um actually though with the yoga pants in the picture I could tell but the bit just past the knee um, did look quite loose on the pattern picture um, and I just want them to be a little bit tight all the way down the leg so that I can wear them under sort of um, dresses and things so that it just makes them more comfortable to wear for me. I did find that the pattern um, fitted nicely around the bum and my hips but I, at the front I found that this this waist bit comes basically up to my boobs <laughs> might be because I'm quite a short body person um, so it's not obviously you can't cater for everybody's shape and I've got quite a short body so um, with the next pair I'm going to make I'll just reduce the length of the body um, at the front and keep it the same at the sides and the bum because I've got a big bum to cover <laughs> um, but I think to be honest though I'm reasonably pleased with my first go at them I used a piece of fabric that was out of my stash um, they're, they're sort of three quarter length ones. Um, I used a piece of fabric that was out of my stash um, and it was just a nice stretchy piece of lycra that stretches in both directions and you want something that does over 50% stretch um, at least in the width so that it can stretch over your body if you're doing any sort of exercise. Um, so I picked the right type, type of fabric I think. Um, what I did actually is because I'm only five foot three and the pattern is uh, actually written for people who are like five foot six I did take three inches out of the length of the leg uh, and on the shortening lines on the pattern um, to make them appropriate for me and I was happy with the length that came out afterwards. 
so well, hopefully that helps you if you're interested in making some leggings yes Barbara isn't very pleased because she can't wear them because she hasn't got any legs she's only got um, a stand so she can't really display leggings very well bless her um, I'm sure she'll be back next week though so watch out for that so my next part of the sewing section is some sort of English paper piecing so I have previously shown you that I made um, this panel of English paper pieced um, half inch hexagons and I've actually appliqued them onto this um, sewing case and this is a lovely pattern by Emma from the Vintage Sewing Box. Um, I haven't quite finished it yet actually so in the pattern it says to do a little uh, like a hexagon a florette like this just to go in this top bit here which I am going to do, I just haven't got round to it yet. You can see that I've already got my bits of bobs in there um, and I've also completed a really cute little pin cushion as well. I'll show you close up the actual sewing case to start with. Um, I've used some cotton and linen material to back it on and then it's bound with some material that coordinates with the hexagons on the front. So these are quarter inch hexagons here that decorate the inside, that's part of the pattern. I did change it a little bit in that I've a tiny little bit of piping at the top of these pockets of a different colour fabric and I also did um, a little bit of different fabric either side of the zip there and this is a lovely um, lined pocket which I've got my little um, bits of fabric and bits and bobs in there which are looking a bit of a mess but inside you can see that I've um, put some fabric that coordinates with the hexagons on the inside as well um, I actually in some places I've replaced the interfacing with some wadding as well um, I didn't put anything inside the pockets because this fabric is quite a sturdy fabric anyway um, and of course you're supposed to put some hexagons on the back but I haven't done those yet I'm going to leave them till last although it will be a little bit awkward to apply afterwards and this is the tiny little pin cushion that I made um, that fits inside it and this is also following a pattern by lovely Emma from Vintage Sewing Box am I holding it upside down all my little butterflies upside down there so that's how it looks I did find these little tiny quarter inch hexagons um, a little bit fiddlier to do than the half inch hexagons but I think I've kind of got used to it now um, and I've been enjoying having a go at those and I think it's lovely how you can pop your little cushion in your sewing case I haven't done the little attachment exactly how Emma had designed it, partly because I forgot to put it on when I was doing the binding on the back bit. But I'm going to modify it slightly in that I'm going to add a couple of hexagons um, either side of where the elastic or uh, string or whatever I'm going to use to attach it at the back and then I'll do a fabric covered button as well. Um, but I am really pleased with it and Emma's pattern instructions are really good. Um, so definitely recommend those and hopefully I'll have something on the back to show you next week and I'll have done my little hexagons to go in the top there. Um, I'm also going to make another one of these little needle books. This is by um, Emma as well and it's a, the a pattern is for free for this one and I did this one previously to put all my machine needles in but I want to do one of these so it'll fit nicely inside here. Put that that side and I can keep my needles in there as well um, but this one's obviously for my sewing machine so this must be out by my sewing machine <laughs> but I will do them in the same sort of hexagons um, to tone in with these colours here but I love it I forgot to say as well, the fabrics that I used for these were all Lynette Anderson fabrics um, for the ones I've used for the hexagons and then I've just used um, a plain cotton linen for the background uh, it's quite a sturdy fabric so that it um, makes the whole thing um, quite a substantial thing to carry around so I think all I've got left is my shop update information so first of all I have a new colorway to uh, show you this one's called Footloose and it's inspired by all the beautiful taffeta dresses um, that you see in the film <laughs> um, and also it's a song as well so 
how could you be get how could it get any better than an 80s film and an 80s song so that one's gonna be called footloose there's um pale blues and beige and coral colors in there a nice sort of subtle mixture of colors and then if you want a sock set i'm going to be doing it with coral as well but again if you want um blue as a contrast color instead um, i'm happy to do that just leave a message with your order um this is dyed on my normal merino nylon base in four ply but i do have quite a lot of other choices so you can have the stellina base which is basically the one with merino and a bit of sparkle in it if you're wanting some sparkle I'm also doing the Stellina in the sort of 50 gram, 20 gram sock sets now. Um, so if you look at the website, if you click on hand dyed yarn, it'll all be the list of different colorways. And then when you go into each of the colorways, you've got the option on the drop down box to pick um, any of the bases. And you can choose um, any of my bases from, I've got three lace, um, quite a lot of different fingering weight alternatives, um, a couple of DKs and a couple of Aran bases that you can choose from. So I've also introduced some more bases for my mini sets. So on the website, I have um, mini, mini skein set one, two, three, and four, as well as the lockdown mini skein set. Um, and you can choose when you click on the listing that there's um, a number of different options now. So the first one on the list is a merino nylon fingering weight. And then you can also choose a merino nylon and stellina. So if you want sparkle um, fingering weight as well. Um, and then thirdly i've got a bfl and nylon fingering weight uh, option as well and then also i've now introduced a dk version merino nylon dk that you can choose so they're all 20 gram minis um and you can select whichever base you like last of all i'm going to be introducing some shawl kits so those shawls that i've made out of my own yarn for myself i'm going to be photographing those and listing um, the yarn as a sort of kit that you can buy um, to make that shawl obviously they're not my own shawl pattern so you'll have to buy the shawl pattern separately but in case you're not sure of what sort of yarns to choose you can choose the same ones that i've used so I think that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you next week. Bye!